Chapter 1 O Caledonia, Stern and Wild Duncan McGillivray, Simon Fraser, 1793-1808 The realization of a transcontinental trade route from western North America to an oriental market was the long-sought goal of fur trade merchants in North America. Because beaver was a fur that repaid the costs of acquisition and transportation, finding new sources of those pelts became crucial to those engaged in the fur trade. As distances stretched ever farther into the remote north, logistical problems became acute. Northern streams and lakes were only free of ice for five months, barely enough time to deliver packs of furs to the Grand Portage on Lake Superior, take on new cargoes of trade goods, and make it back to a distant western post in a short traveling season. Expansion into each new river's drainage system increased the deadly risks of being stopped by ice. As the costs of three to four thousand mile round trips approached the value of the furs to be sold, further northern expansion would eventually become a money losing proposition. Alexander Mackenzie's overland route of 1793 to the Pacific had proven to be a barren accomplishment, but using the familiar Saskatchewan River approach might be a better answer, and he professed interest in the broad continental strategy of the trade. Having marched upstream in lockstep with other Montreal competitors and the rival Hudson's Bay Company, the partners of the Northwest Company considered finding a way to break over the imposing barrier of the Rocky Mountains to open a potential bonanza of beaver swimming in the waters of the Columbia River. However, due to founding member Simon McTavish's experiments in maritime trade and reluctance to undertake expensive new ventures, Western expansion did not get underway until the first year of the 19th century. But McTavish's caution was more than an ambitious NWC partner like Alexander Mackenzie could endure. His explorations had confirmed the Fraser River was too dangerous to descend and gained him notoriety and British honors. Throwing in with rival Montreal interest, Mackenzie made himself the inspiration for a new Northwest company, which, eventually, took the more illustrious and, just a tick imperious, designation Sir Alexander Mackenzie and Company. Despite his easily consulted book, Voyages from Montreal on the River St. Lawrence to the Frozen and Pacific Oceans, 1801, Mackenzie actually hindered British trade expansion by distracting Western impetus. As far as the Northwest Company was concerned, Mackenzie's competition drew off the resources necessary to support worthwhile expansion. During the month preceding his 1802 knighthood, Mackenzie wrote a letter to Lord Hobart, the Secretary of State for War and Colonies, that included an enclosure he titled Preliminaries to the Establishment of a Permanent British Fishery and Trade in Furs and on the Continent and West Coast of North America. Among proposals in this communication was his recommendation that a British settlement be established in the River Columbia. He was too late again. The mercantile development of the Pacific Northwest had already begun, with a whisper that was almost lost to history. While Alexander Mackenzie's ghost-assisted book was being tidied up for publication in London, a more conservative approach to Western expansion in the fur trade was being explored on the upper reaches of the Saskatchewan River. The visionaries driving that plan were well-placed nephews of Mackenzie's aging nemesis, Simon McTavish. Despite criticism by other partners, their inclusion into the fur trade wasn't nepotistic, it was just clannish. William, Duncan, and Simon McGillivray were sons of McTavish's sister, Anne, who had married a poor Inverness Shire tenant farmer. The three boys faced an unpromising future in Scotland until their successful uncle brought them to Montreal to learn the Northwest fur trade. While William and Duncan were being groomed for a larger role in the operations of the McTavish, Frobisher, and Company Agency of the Northwest Company, their lame brother Simon was sent to the London Agency.